All right, here is a third test. I got rid of the uh, plastic holders and I mounted the battery straight to the board with a Tesla style fuse. Um, and because that hole is, uh, well, that's a through hole, I thought, well, why don't I just put more cells on the bottom? So now I doubled up the, the cells and so it's uh, 14 cells per board, uh, still 7S, still, to, you know, 24 volts. Uh, these are 30, the 30 amp cells, right? But I'm not going to push them that hard. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll push it. I don't know how far. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe the fuses will start going because uh, basically this thing should be able to put out 60 amps, of course. Uh, now the board might start heating up and the traces um, yeah so we'll, we'll just see let's just run this test So these cells are still at ambient temperature. The, the fuses, everything. I mean, there's no heat whatsoever. I mean, my hot is, my hand is hot. The batteries are not. This is, I don't know, this is a weird thing. Let's, uh, let's load it up more. Let's really load it up. Boom, okay. Now we're talking about 256 watts. All right, now we're talking about 17 amps. It's 400 watts. Surely we're gonna start seeing so, oh, there we go. Let's see. Okay. Now this is starting to... The board is hot now. Right? And what's hot? Oh, I mean, not hot. It's 115 degrees. are all warm but nothing is hot I want to see that so there you go these PCBs are pretty versatile you could uh, you know do it like this right like how I intended with the uh, holders it's a lot easier to put together it takes way less time to solder 14 points than to do this right to put a little thing across the, the pass through and then solder into the cells or even doing the spot welding thing that's gonna take longer but it allows you to put twice as many batteries on a single board which will mean that will bring the price or the cost of all these whole system down by 50% so you know it'll add probably about 50% more time uh, but it'll bring the cost down 50% so it just depends what you have more if you have more time you can do it like this. If you have more money, then you can do it like that. It'll be a lot quicker. But I wanna talk about something that I think most of you or a lot of you guys are not understanding. See, we have to take into account context. And we are building power walls. For those of you who don't know what a power wall is, a power wall is a battery that goes in your wall. But that's not why it's called power wall. It is called power wall because it powers your wall. That means the electric lines in your walls, they're being powered by a home battery. And in that context, your battery has to last all day because, because your walls have to be powered 24 seven, at least typically. I mean, you might have some odd reason why you only need them to be on for a certain amount of time. But for the most part, you know, your house wiring, your house electric systems has to be on 24 seven. And so if you're gonna build a battery, it has to be big enough so it can last 
all day and whether it all day means 12 hours to you or 24 hours then it's pretty much the same thing when we're talking about the build and output of a Powerwall battery, right? So, so the test that I've been showing you where this gets warm and it gets hot, it's at 1C. At a discharge rate of 2C, that's when it starts getting into what I consider to be dangerous levels of heat, right? But you have to realize that a 2C load on a battery, on a house battery, means that you're taking it from fully charged to fully discharged in half hour. And I don't know, I don't know anyone that wants to build a battery that only lasts half hour. I don't think you want that, right? You really want to work hard and install the thing in your wall that it's only good for half for half hour? I don't think so. We all want to build a battery that will give us uh, power for 12 hours. And under that application, then logic dictates that we're gonna be discharging it at 1 12th of 1C. And so depending on your cells, these are two amp hour cells uh, 1C is two amps off of uh, the context. And at two amps, these were fine. They weren't, you know, melting or anything, right? But at 112, which by the way, what is 112? It's 160 at milliamps. That's what a typical system designed to last 12 hours will be loaded at. Each one of these contexts will be loaded with about 160 uh, milliamps, which are those rates, there's like virtually zero heat being created in this. So when you have, your 30 kilowatt hour battery that lasts you 12 hours, you're not gonna see the cells being warm. You're not gonna see all the inefficiencies of all that heat that is being wasted in heat because you're pushing this stuff to the limits. That's why I'm experimenting with these and I'm contemplating using them in a system that it's really easy to put together. Now, the biggest hurdle is now, not if this is, this is good enough to work, this, this works. So now the challenge is to find parts that are already in the market, that they're already being mass produced so that we can get them for very little cost. And that way we can make a system that allows you to assemble large battery packs uh, quickly and affordably, right? And so that's where we're at in this stage. It, we're, I'm not doing these tests to see if these are feasible, if these are, like, I already know they work. I already know that, that they give me two amps, which is about 20 times more than I need out of them. So, so we have to keep context in mind. In the context of building large DIY Powerwall batteries, this stuff is going to work. This stuff is gonna work even better, but it's more work, right? And it allows you to pull up to like 400 watts off of uh, two strings of cells, right? Now, there's not a lot of cells that will give you 400 watts without heating up. These ones happen to be one of them because these are 30 amp continuous cells, right? So. But you know, you're not gonna make a power wall out of these cells because that would be a waste. You're gonna be using energy cells instead of power cells. All right, I hope that gives you a little bit of perspective as to why I'm designing this system the way I am, why I'm not worried about cooling it, why I'm not, there's not gonna be any heat. And I already know the duty cycle of a cell that is put together in a large battery pack. I have 5,000 of these little cells running around pushing my 3,000 pound car currently. And so, so I'm taking all that into account when I'm building this system here. I just found out that the first batch of 100 of these circuit boards are done in the factory in China. So I should have them in a few days. Uh, stay tuned for that. This first batch, it's still a test run, right? I'm gonna be using most of them to, to, to build a larger packs and then test that. If you want some so you can start doing your own tests, I will make some of those available to you guys. And then after that, I think we just have to modify a few things, like make these holes smaller, uh, maybe put some holes in here so that we can use zip ties. Right, so that uh, the people who will decide to build packs this way instead of the other way, then they can they can just zip tie them, right? And then you can spot weld them and stuff. It'll just make it a, 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 a tiny bit faster. I also wanna make the bottom over here post negative so that this is positive, this is negative. That way one of the terminals doesn't have a longer uh, trace adding more resistance to that one leg, which actually c kind of affects when you load it up to a 400. At the lower rates, uh, the effect is less, so I don't have to worry about it, but if anyone is going to wanna build something where they push these to their limit, right? Where it seems like the, lim the limit of the circuit board's around 400 watts, that's when it starts getting hot, then it'll help them there by adding that. 
So we just want to add a little bit more versatility to the board so that it's useful in more applications rather than less, right? All right. So with this, I say thank you again for watching this video. Thank you for going on the journey and designing hopefully what it's going to be a, a rapid build system that regular folk can take and uh, use it to build large DIY power walls with. All right. Thank you. See you in the next video.